In a recent video linked in the video description, I did a careful experiment to find ideal banking lines for sliding banks over a wide range of angles. Remember, a sliding bank is when the object ball hits the cushion with stun or no top spin or bottom spin. If the object ball is frozen to or very close to the cushion, almost any speed will work since the object ball does not have time or distance to develop top spin. However, slow speed won't work if the object ball is farther from the cushion since the object ball picks up top spin as it drags across the cloth. Here, fast speed is required to make sure the object ball is sliding into the cushion. In the recent video, I compared various diamond systems people use to aim sliding bank shots, including my one-third more than twice system, which is the best of the systems evaluated so far. In this video, I present a new system that performs even better. I discovered it by plotting the data from the careful experiment and finding the line that best matched the measured banking angles. If you want to see the analysis which compares the new system to others, it is linked in the video description. Here is the outline for this video. If you want to use the new system effectively, be sure to watch the entire video. And if you have any questions or feedback, please post comments below. The new and improved system is called the twice plus tenth system. It is more accurate than the other systems, including one third more than twice, and it works over a wider range of angles. I know, it sounds too good to be true, but it is as good as it sounds. Just as with the one-third more than twice system, everything is measured relative to the rail grooves across from the diamonds instead of through the diamonds. The rail grooves, visible on worn cloth, are where balls sit when in contact with the cushions. The reason why this system measures across from the diamonds instead of through the diamonds like many other systems is it results in better bank accuracy over a larger range than any existing through diamond system. The twice plus tenth system is simple. The origination rail number is twice the banking rail number, plus that many tenths. For example, twice 1 is 2, and adding 2 tenths gives 2.2. Again, the origination rail number is always twice plus that many tenths. If you prefer using tens instead of ones for diamond numbers, just move the decimal place, but the numbers are really the same. A good way to learn the system is to set up and practice straight shots on each of the system lines. It can be helpful to use the printable diamond ruler linked in the video description to visualize the tenths until you get enough practice to do it on your own. I've placed a ball at the half diamond point on the banking rail. The zero diamond point is in line with the nose of the adjacent cushion. I've placed another ball at 1.1 on the opposite rail. These balls help you visualize the shot line when practicing. I've placed the cue ball in 8 along this 1.1 to 0.5 line. Because of the steep angle on the shot, I had to place the 8 a little far from the rail to avoid the double kiss, but in general, place it as close to the cushion as you can so speed won't be a factor. Try to hit a stop shot to make sure your aim is true. This table banks a little long on this line, probably due to the distance to the rail and the very fast speed used, but the bank still went. Here is the 2.2 to 1 line. Here is the 3.3 to 1.5 line. Here's the setup for the 4.4 to 2 line. Remember, this is not a through diamond system. The ball is across from 2 in the rail groove. If you were aiming through the line of diamonds instead, the number would be a little less than 1.8. Here's the ball on the other rail across from 4.4. Again, this is very different from the through diamond aim point at about 4.6. The bank goes from 4.4 to 2. Here's the 5.5 to 2.5 line. Here's the 6.6 .6 to 3 line. And here's the 7.7 .7 to 3.5 line. Remember, the opposite rail number is always twice the banking rail number plus that number of tenths. And the measurements are done in the rail grooves across from the diamonds, not through the diamonds like many other systems. Now let's look at some factors and effects you need to consider when using a banking system like this. First, if your aim is off even a hair, you won't be successful. A slight outside cut will go long, and a slight inside cut will come up short. With a straight shot, you need to be very careful to not have any side spin. Right spin on the cue ball will transfer left to the object ball, making it go short. 
and left spin on the cue ball will transfer right to the object ball, making it go long. As we saw earlier, speed has very little effect when the object ball is frozen to or very close to the cushion. This bank goes at slow speed, at medium speed, and at fast speed, all on the exact same line of aim. But at a larger distance from the rail, the object ball will pick up some forward roll and will not be sliding into the cushion, as required by the system. Did you see how badly I missed that bank using the exact same line of aim as before? I can still use the system aim here, but much faster speed is required to make sure the object ball slides into the cushion with no topspin. When there is a cut angle on a bank, you need to adjust your shot. An outside cut like this transfers left or reverse spin to the object ball, which sends the ball short. One way to deal with this is to just overcut the ball slightly by feel. Another option is to use gearing outside spin so there is no throw or spin transfer. For detailed info on how to do this, see the 40% rule at the gearing link in the video description. This allows you to use the system aim exactly. As always, for any shot with side spin, I use the System for Aiming with Side Spin, or SAWS, to accurately compensate my aim for cue ball deflection. See the SAWS link for more information. An inside cut, like this, transfers right or running spin to the object ball, which sends the ball long. Again, one option is to overcut the ball slightly. And the other option is to use gearing outside spin with the system aim. Top and bottom spin also have a small effect. First notice that along this line, a stop shot sends the ball a touch long to the far side of the pocket. Bottom spin transfers a little top spin to the 8, and the 8 picks up a touch more on the way to the cushion, causing it to go a touch longer, resulting in a miss. Top spin transfers slight bottom to the 8, but some of that is lost on the way to the cushion. Regardless, the ball goes a touch shorter, but not enough to miss the pocket. One message of this section is, banks are difficult and they should be avoided whenever possible. Another message is, learn and develop a feel for all the effects so you can account for them and even use them to your advantage when necessary. For more information, see the bank effects link in the video description. One way to use the twice plus tenth system is to visualize the banking lines we practiced earlier and just aim between the lines. I've laid out short cues here so you can clearly see the 3.3 to 1.5 and, and 4.4 to 2 lines. Because the 8 is right between these two lines, you just need to aim in the middle. You can use your playing cue to help visualize the lines at the table. I first place my tip in the rail groove at 1.5 and then place the butt over the other rail groove at 3.3. I do the same for the 4.4 to 2 line. Then I visualize the line in between. Another way to use the system is with numbers. If the object ball is close to the cushion, it is easy to estimate where it will hit the cushion. Even if your approximation for the banking line is off, your estimate for where the ball will hit the cushion will still be good. Here, the 8 will hit the cushion very close to 1 and 3 quarters, or 1.75. Twice that is 3.5, or 3.5. Add between 3 and 4 tenths to arrive at a little more than 3.8. If you want to use the visual method shown earlier using the reference lines, you need to be careful how you judge between the lines. Many videos on YouTube and some instructors will tell you to do a parallel shift from the nearest reference line when using banking systems. This will work if the object ball is very close to a line, but it will fail badly if the ball is between two lines. As an example, here's the 3.3 to 1.5 line. If I parallel shift to get to the 8, I miss on the short side. And if I parallel shift from the 4.4 to 2 line instead, I miss long. To be more accurate, use a 2 to 1 shift between the lines, where you move the butt twice as much as the tip. As an example, here's the 3.3 to 1.5 line. It is easier to judge the shift by visualizing distances with the tip along the line of diamonds on the rail. You could just move a little at a time, always moving the butt twice as much as the tip, or you can just try to visualize the total amount the tip needs to move, and move the butt twice as much until the cue is over the object ball. 
You can check yourself after the shift by making sure the butt moved twice as much as the tip relative to the original positions. But it is much easier to just pivot the cue as you shift, trying to move the butt twice as much as the tip during the pivot. To me, the easiest and most accurate approach is to use the numbers like I showed before. Estimate the number on the banking rail, double it, and add that many tenths. That's it. The twice plus tenth system also works for banks into a side pocket or off an end rail. You aim everything the same way. If banking to a side, you count diamonds from the side pocket instead. For example, here I have a banking line set up from 2.2 to 1. At bigger angles, you need to be able to measure beyond the end rail. Here I have the line set up from 4.4 to 2. You can use your cue to measure off 1.4 diamonds to extend it from the third diamond to get 4.4. Here's an example bank off an end rail. Again, always number the diamonds from your target pocket. I've set up the banking line from 4.4 to 2. Again, you can extend this measurement beyond the rail using your cue to measure off 1.4 diamonds and shifting the 3 to get 4.4. This shot goes a hair long on this table. That's the tendency, since any curve forward due to any topspin on the object ball gets exaggerated over the full length of the table. Also, on these long banks, if your aim is off even a hair, or if you apply a hair of sidespin by mistake, you can miss the bank badly. Here, I was able to pocket the ball with a very slight cut to the left to send the bank a touch shorter. Now I'll show a few examples with random cue ball and object ball positions to show how the system can be applied quickly in game situations. Here, the nearest system line is from 3.3 to 1.5, from which I am doing the 2 to 1 shift to the 8. There is a cut angle, so I use gearing outside spin so I don't need to change the aim. Here, the closest system line is from 2.2 to 1. Again, using a 2 to 1 shift, I find the required aiming line. I use a touch of outside spin to account for the slight cut angle. I also need fast speed since the object ball is away from the cushion some. When the object ball is close to the banking rail, I find it much easier and more accurate to just use numbers. The object ball will hit the cushion at 2.2. Twice that is 4.4. Adding a little more than 4 tenths gives a little more than 4.8. Here, the object ball is at the 2.8 point. Twice that is 5.6. Adding a little more than 0.5 gives a little more than 6.1. Because the object ball is frozen to the cushion, any speed will work, even slow speed. I hope you find the new twice plus tenth system helpful in your game. I plan to use this as my primary aiming system for sliding object ball banks. For other systems useful for different types of kicks and banks, see the resource and tutorial pages linked in the video description. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave!